Absolutely. Absolutely. So good evening once again, everyone. Um, as we know, we've had a, a really thorough, uh, engaged process that began uh, publicly speaking back at the start of this school year. And in this process, we've reviewed our, not only the overall analysis of the budget, and looking at challenges that were before the district and all public schools. We reviewed um, one evening, um, we spent the time focused on operations and finance, another evening on curriculum instruction. We've also had uh, an evening where I presented my proposed budget. And then on the following meeting, April 13th, um, when we considered um, the new state aid data, as well as the stimulus funds that would be coming into Irvington, we made some adjustments, which led to the budget adoption on the 20th of April. When we think of all of these meetings, it's important for us to acknowledge that um, all of these resources with backup documents, presentations, and videos of the presentations and subsequent Board of Education Dialogue are all posted on the district website or linked from board docs for community members to be able to go back and to review um, these important points. But at the end of the day, uh, this is a tax cap compliant budget, a budget that contains um, some push ahead expenses of nearly $1.4 million, along with new considerations just north of $426,000. Uh, which results in a proposed budget of $66,361,700. When we look at the overall um, budget, we also recognize that we're going to see increases in foundation aid in not only the 21-22 fiscal year, but we're expecting to see those increases again in the 22-23 and 23-24 school years. That will certainly be a great resource to the school district. In addition, we have um, essentially two pots of federal stimulus funding that we have until either September of 24, or September of 23 to spend. The administration um, is actively developing a plan um, for um, the use of these funds and uh, we'll be presenting that at a future uh, meeting. Um, on next Tuesday, um, budget uh, voters will head to the polls to vote on our uh, proposed budget. And in doing so, we always ask that folks keep in mind um, what a no vote means, um, that if a budget is defeated twice, because the Board of Education always has the opportunity to put up another budget, whether it be the same budget or a revised budget, if a budget is to fail twice by the voters, we will enter what is considered a contingency budget. And in doing so, we'll see cuts of approximately $1.4 million dollars and in doing so, we know there will be impacts on student programming and district operations. Of note that we, we will not be able to purchase any new equipment. There will be no community use of facilities and there will be no capital improvements unless emergency situation arises. So this just underscores the importance of public engagement and the board really spending its time and being diligent in developing a fiscal, fiscally and academically responsible budget. So when we think about where we are, you can see the many different programs that we've had, this public discussions, all of which are available um, for the public to, to go back and review. Um, we do have some communications that will be going out in the district newsletter. The village also sent out communications. I posted numerous um, items on Facebook in recent days and Ms. Stein uh, maintains a, a detailed web page with all of the budget information. Uh, so if there's any questions that anyone in the community may have, they can always email the Board of Education at board at irvingtonschools.org or budget at irvingtonschools.org and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, with that said, um, again, just want to encourage everyone to make sure that you head to the polls for in-person voting. Unless someone has already applied for an absentee ballot, um, in-person voting on Tuesday the 18th, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
at Main Street School. Voting will be held in its traditional location in the school auditorium. That being said, Mr. Friedman, I think opportunity for any members of the public to pose questions if they exist. Thank you, Dr. Harrison. Uh, at this point, as you said, if there are any questions from anyone in the attendance from uh, the community, now is an opportunity to ask any questions you may have. You can put your name and address in the Q&A feature in Zoom and you'll be recognized. So we'll give everyone a couple seconds for that. If there's anyone who wants to comment and before we move on. So uh, seeing none, uh, do we need a motion to close the hearing or do we just close the hearing? I would ask a motion. So is, is there a motion to close our public budget hearing? So moved. All in favor? Aye. So uh, now we'll continue on with our regular meeting and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Can we have a motion to accept tonight's agenda? Second. All in favor? Aye. Dr. Harrison, over to you for district updates. Yes. So good evening, everybody. Um, you know, it has been a whirlwind, and I sit before you tonight really in awe with the fact that we're sitting here thinking it a week away from the budget vote, which means we're in the middle of May already. And I can't imagine this, considering where we were this time a year ago, where we were contemplating all the challenges of the pandemic, thinking about how we were going to safely operate our schools. And while we still face lots of challenges, it's really exciting and should be a moment of pride for everybody on the board, the administration, our faculty, staff, and our parent community to see where we are today. With all of our schools open for 100% student attendance, as I entered the campus this evening, I was standing outside watching a track meet, seeing our students um, compete. Uh, when I'm constantly updating our social media platforms to really be again in awe of the amazing accomplishments of our students uh, and the resiliency they have. The level of achievement and success that we've seen in athletics, um, the level of uh, really accelerated learning and competitive academic work that we've seen on the different academic teams um, really has blown me away and something that really makes me so proud of our students and our faculty and staff, of course. Um, you know, I think it's appropriate that, um, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've stopped to honor our faculty, staff, administration, in a number of different ways. Uh, you know, it's well known that last week was Teacher Appreciation Day, and here in Irvington, we always choose to have it as a, a staff appreciation week, and we thank our partners with the IEF, PTSA, for all their work in helping honor our fabulous, fabulous staff. We also had um, principal uh, recognition week and in doing so we honored all of our administrators. We had school nurse day uh, where not only did we um, applaud and thank our amazing uh, school nurses as we affectionately refer to them as the Fab Four. Um, one of our nurses was featured in a uh, Victoria Diamond, who is our Main Street School nurse, was featured in an impressive article in the New York Post last week. Uh, so, you know, we really have an incredible staff here, and um, they certainly uh, have my thanks and, and gratitude for all the incredible work that they've done to get us to where we are this year. Um, with that in mind, and think about the progress that we continue to make um, in the region and in our school district in particular. I'm, I'm proud to share that on, on Tuesday, June 8th, just before the board meeting at 6 p.m., we are going to have our annual 
tenure recipient and retiree reception out in the campus quad. Uh, just last year, at this time, we are unable to have such an event. So it's another symbol of how far we've come. And importantly, on this night, not only are we gonna uh, recognize the class of 21, so to speak, but we are inviting back our retirees and tenure recipients from last spring to make sure that they get their due and we have that opportunity um, to applaud them for their accomplishments. So we look forward to that um, event. Um, when we think about progress, and I'm gonna keep going on this really positive theme here. Um, yesterday, we facilitated our third round of surveillance testing uh, with 103 community members, students and staff being tested for COVID-19. And once again, uh, we had zero positive cases detected. Uh, that really speaks to the shared commitment we have in the Irvington School community, the responsibility that everyone holds for maintaining uh, the healthy environments and the responsible individual actions. While we have three more rounds of testing before us, um, before the year comes to a close, and you know, I, I, I'm not convinced that we're gonna continue to get zeros across the board, the fact that we've made it this far um, really is a, a testament to the good work and the commitment that we have across um, the school district. Um, so I wanna thank everybody for that, that continued um, work. You know, when we think about the other steps, you know, I remember going back in January and February talking about my initiative and drive trying to get all of our faculty and staff vaccinated and having taken those steps and partnering with the necessary um, county uh, agencies to make that happen. Now we are taking another step and we are collaborating with the Department of Health and other area school districts to offer vaccination clinics to students whose families are interested in them being vaccinated. So I am hopeful that we'll be making an announcement later this week that in partnership with the Quad Village Districts that we're going to have a joint vaccination clinic that'll be facilitated by um, the uh, Westchester County Department of Health in one of our um, school districts. So um, to those that will be eligible and we're waiting to hear from the Westchester County Department of Health. Um, but initially when we set out on this effort, we were looking at students that were 16 and older to be vaccinated. Since then we know now Pfizer um, has been approved for use for 12 and above. So if the um, county is prepared to support that and deliver uh, the vaccine to um, students of such age, uh, we will extend that opportunity as well. Um, so again, looking to be of service to our broader school community. Um, you know, just this morning, and I looked to uh, Jane, uh, who we started the morning in a CAB meeting today, where we had breakout sessions with our student leaders from the middle school and the high school. And um, the discussion today was about the transition back to full in-person learning. And as so often the case, I was impressed by our students and how well they articulate their thinking, the, the depth of their thought. Um, but really I can think about my group and then the comments from all the other breakout groups was how thankful our students are to be back in person learning how much they're enjoying the social component, but our students really focused on the academics. They talked about how learning is different, how they, they feel that they're more engaged in the learning when they're in person in the classroom. And they talked about how much they valued the personal connections that they're making with their teachers, how much easier it is to ask a question and get a response, to see a teacher for extra help for a challenging situation or to help take them take their work to another place. Our students didn't come in and say, oh, the barriers are, uh, are, are difficult for us, where we know they are. Our students didn't complain about masks. They talked about how appreciative they were and the benefits of being in-person learning, which really just impressed me about the quality of the young adults that we have in our school district. Um, and finally, the, the last thing that I would share, and it's just a, a, a really important reminder, as I stated during the budget hearing, um, the vote is on uh, Tuesday, the 18th, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Main Street School. Um, so I'm encouraging every registered voter in the Irvington School community to be sure to come out and let your voice be heard and vote on the budget on next Tuesday. 
Following the budget vote um, at 9 p.m., the Board of Education will meet in the auditorium at Main Street School, wherein um, they will certify the budget votes and the election for two trustee positions. That's all I have this evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Harrison. Uh, so we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, Beth, do you want to handle communications? Yeah, sure. Um, should, should, can you hear me through the mic? Is that working? Yeah. Okay. So in communications, we focus very much on the upcoming climate survey. Are we still calling it climate survey? School quality survey. School quality survey. Um, that's going to continue to be under uh, work for a little while, but should be out in, I think, the month of June. And uh, we also discussed how important it is for everyone to get out and vote next week. And uh, I think uh, most people have gotten a publication in their mailbox. Um, and I think that's it for communications. Thank you. Uh, policy? Oh, I could do that as well. Oh, I was going to. Okay, so in policy, uh, we talked about quite a few things. We finished um, what's called the 5,000 survey uh, series, but in that context, we talked about um, student-sponsored, uh, school-sponsored student speech, as well as personal student speech. We talked about student fundraising. We talked, I think, about safety plans. That may have been at our last meeting. We talked about gender-neutral restrooms, and we also talked about student organizations and the manner in which they can be run. So we're almost done, I think, with the 5,000 series. It should be coming up for first read for the trustees, I think, June. in June. And we finished all the NYSSBA recommended additions to policy. So it was really productive time. Moving right along. Um, curriculum? Yes. Um, We talked about the hybrid learning experience. What have we learned? Um, the takeaways, lessons on civics, presentation by um, assistant principal Liza Wishney, the Irvington community survey data, um, the trends and patterns. What does the data imply about student gains in areas of challenges and the next steps and expanding the data use through five lab. Um, and we looked at, the five lab and some of the data that had been exported. Dave, do you want to add anything? Um, no, it was really succinct and perfect. I just would add briefly only add that the, uh, the software demonstration was key, uh, was really excellent. Uh, just uh, you know, from someone who has been um, working hard towards that end with, with uh, this administration for a number of years it was really wonderful to see and it was a really well-led presentation and exciting to see what's going to happen with it going forward great thank you david great and thanks if, if i could just add today uh mary and i had a, an update from uh, liza wishney who's um, really spearheading this project on our behalf and uh, we're really excited to see that um, all of our aims web data now from looking at since 2016-17 is being uploaded into five lab as is all of our report card data so with that this warehouse is starting to just get richer and richer um, each and every day and we're starting going to be able to realize the capacity uh, that it's going to bring um, to david's point this has been an objective that we shared and um, you know we're proud to see this this progress thank you are there any liaison updates yes um, the CAB um, advisory board meeting we met this morning, and um, I just want to add one thing to uh, what Dr. Harrison said is that the students also commented on um, how supportive the staff has been and how flexible the teachers have been during this time and that they were so happy to get back and um, see them in person. Um, there was an update from the Irvington community by um, Mayor Brian Smith on the rezoning of Strawberry Lane. Um, then we had breakout discussions on how to deal with stressors um, 
getting back to this uh, post pandemic, not quite yet, but getting back to five days a week and the challenges and how to deal with them. Um, that's about that. And I also have an update um, from the Wellness and Sustainability Com Committee that we had this morning. We um, review COVID procedures for wellness, talked about how well the BioProtect um, applications on the surfaces have been working, the review of school specific wellness activities. Each principal reported on the wellness activities they were doing. There was a big emphasis on um, social emotional learning and um, mental health and mindfulness in the upper grades. Um, community solar exploration, um, that's going to continue. And we discussed the capital projects and Dr. Harrison spoke about the great COVID testing program that is going on. Thank you. Any other liaison updates? Um, I'd like to report out for the Irvington PTSA. Uh, their luncheon, which is a big fundraiser, is this Friday the 14th. Um, if you look in your emails, as a community member, you will see information about that. Um, in addition, the PTSA last week voted to support the budget, and they sent out a blast reminding people to please go and vote. Um, and they also hosted a breakfast for all staff for Staff Appreciation Week. So many thanks to our community partner, the PTSA. Thank you. Any others? So at this point, uh, we'll move on to community comment. So if there are any members of the community that wish to comment at this time on topics that appear on the agenda, please put your name and address in the Q&A feature in Zoom and you'll be recognized. So not seeing anyone, we're gonna move on to 8.1, but if anyone comes in with a question, uh, you can uh, ask it later. So, uh, so we have now 8.1, which is an update on the capital project to follow on the robust discussion we had at our last meeting. Uh, there were some questions that were asked. I think we have some additional inform information. Ms. Stein, could you put up the high school entrance rendering? I got it, Karen. So uh, while that's coming up, I, th I think you know tonight that's the one area that uh, we'll talk about further in particular, because we do need to give our architects direction on that. Uh, we had talked about some other things at the last meeting, including the card reader access and the sequencing of that. I would suggest that we, we can delay that discussion a little further and wait until we get the next cost uh, estimates in June to see where we're at, and then we can revisit uh, that discussion at, at that time uh, since uh, you know that's something that uh, can be carved out uh, then, but the the entrance is something that we do need to get moving on and, and give uh, direction to the architect. So I, I know there was a, Beth, you had had a question uh, last time about the permeable non permeable space. So you know from a starting point, uh, either of the re entry, uh, sorry, either of the new entry designs. Uh, incorporates more uh, permeable space because the area uh, where the buses come up is being pulled closer to the road, closer to the parking lot. So that's gonna add about 3,100 square feet of additional uh, green space along uh, that route. Uh, but now the difference between the ramp design that we're looking at now versus the original design would, would result in about 600 less square feet of green space. Uh, so adding about 600 of non-permeable uh, space, uh, given the fact that you have the, the ramp and the stairs versus just the ramp. So I know that was one of the questions you had. I know there were also some questions about uh, the railing. So as you see here in the rendering, the railing is only on the street side. So uh, the 
the where the it's really not even a ramp because it has such a slight uh, incline, so it's really more of just a walkway for the most part. But the walkway uh, would be bordered on the side closer to the building is on grade. It's only where you get uh, closer to this the street side where it's no longer on grade in this rendering hinge uh, having the railing. So uh, I think, I mean, those were another two main questions. I don't know if uh, any, you or any of the trustees had other questions at this point re regarding it. Um, I didn't have additional, I did not have additional questions. I actually found the information provided helpful. I did go out to look at the site and got a better sense of it because as Ms. Stein had explained, these aren't really to scale. Um, these are renderings that aren't to scale. And I will say that now we that we have the understanding of where the railing is located, it is not like a chute that's going up to the entrance. It's um, much more open than that with, as you said, an on-grade on -grade coincident to the greenery. Like if you're looking at this image in between the entrance and the classrooms. So that's a very nice usable space. And what I also learned that Sorry about that noise. That wasn't as clear as if you look to the uh, west of the steps. First of all, those steps are not going to be as steep as our current steps, and they're going to be have a much wider tread. And on the west side, there is actually additional area that no one had really discussed before, which would provide. You, we've realized all of us how important meeting outdoors can be. And there is actually more space there that will be improved by this project. And although there is more impermeable space than choice number one, ultimately in terms of sustainability and impermeable spaces, the total is an improvement. So I think this is gonna be very exciting. Okay. Uh, anyone else had any other uh, questions or comments at this point? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, Jane. Um, a park, how is parking going to be affected by either one, by this? So either entry design won't affect uh, parking. Uh, uh, so that's not affected in either design. In the overall project though, we are picking up a few additional parking spots in the lower area. We're going to be able to restripe things and also use it. I think we're getting a little bit additional parking along uh, the, the side of the building. So uh, we should have a net increase in a, of a few parking spots. It's, uh, yeah, ex ex yeah. We, we think it's about eight. I believe it's uh, eight to 10. I forget the exact, I have to look it up. It's eight to 10 um, parking spots because we are gonna have some more in the front area. So that will help and we, you know, we can decide if we want to designate that for visitors or, or whatever. So we have that option. And um, I, I did want to add uh, something else, uh, you know, in when you're thinking about having the railing along the walkway piece, uh, the whole traffic pattern is going to be changing, coming out of the parking lot, coming up the hill and with the, there's gonna be crosswalks where the stairs are and also a crosswalk, you know, closer to where that walkway ends, you know, closer to the Mar Gym. So by also having the railing in place, you'll be funneling uh, the students and anyone else to those crosswalks, as opposed to the potential of them just walking across the street. Uh, so in terms of just pedestrian flow, uh, the architects did point out that that was another benefit of uh, this design and having the railing in place, which I, which I do think is actually a really important uh, feature to you know, make sure that the students are getting funneled towards crosswalks because you know, we know, you know people come out, people aren't paying attention. So I do think that is you know, a really important aspect of uh, what we're looking at right now. I did want to clarify one other thing that I believe Ms. Stein can confirm. I think that the renderings didn't show this, but actually the slope on the ramp in rendering number two is very similar to what the slope would have been in rendering number one. Yeah, like, it, it is a little bit more. It yeah. is a little bit more because we're we would be bringing less fill in, which is where uh -huh. we're getting some savings. Uh, but it's it's definitely not. Well, I think it's that in the rendering it looked flat in rendering one, and it certainly yeah, wasn't, it wasn't it was actually flat. sloped. It was not flat. Yeah, no. right. And and well, also I think there's a difference between 
rendering one which was done pre bond pre site survey in terms of the amount of fill I think rendering one probably would involve even more fill than is the current design because it was you know such a big hill and more gradual if you look at the actual plans right now in terms of what uh just a pure ramp option would be that would have a grade and slope that's similar to what you're looking at now with the walkway um yeah and i also did want to tell the public um this also is something that people may not realize but as opposed to when you're working on your house we have these other deadlines which require us to have things like images before we really know the situation but we build into the work that ability so i think i thank everyone on the bng for doing all this work <laughs> but i'm uh, Great. Thanks. Uh, Aaron, yeah. did you have a comment? I did. I just wanted to say, like, I think that we came, that the team came up with a great alternative solution, given that we were facing some cost constraints that I think still works out really well. And we are gaining some, you know, nice green space there. So I think it's a great collaborative effort and we still get cost savings. So, um, you know, I'm proud to see the way that this is like all played out. I think it's, it's really important. Thanks. Um, is everyone comfortable now with, uh, go ahead, Beth. I actually didn't want to forget to ask this. So there are some mature cherry trees um, off to the side. And I was, uh, it would be, uh, Carol, Ms. Stein, I would just want to ask you. So when you're looking out from the building and you're facing the parking lot, there are three mature cherry trees kind of across. Are those going to not be moved moved do we have an arborist does the architect work with somebody in that so i did i did check the design on those um there's there's three trees listed on the design uh two initially on the design it's a good thing that this was brought up because two were um listed as being saved and one was going to be removed but now i've had the architect put all three in to be saved so what will happen is they will need to be temporarily moved while the construction in the parking lot is going on because of the big equipment that'll be there, we will move them to a spot, uh, roof ball and all, and then they will save those and they will plant those in the same general location as they are now, all three of them. So they are beautiful trees. I looked at the trees, I took a picture of them. I, may, I had the architect outside with me and made sure that the plans were marked accordingly. It's great to hear because in terms of the mature cherries, we had that come up on the Dow's Lane shed issue. And the basketball court, um, I took the liberty of looking at the trees, and those particular ones are pretty valuable specimens. Right. There are also some other more trees right around the entry. I took some pictures of those. We can make a determination again which ones we want to save by digging them out um, and then putting them somewhere. We have to keep watering that root ball and all, and, and then you can put them back. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, hopefully that you know, the, that cooperates, there's always a risk with a, with a tree when you do that, that there's something could happen to it and it doesn't retake, you know, but we'll do our best obviously to, to do that. Uh, any other questions from anyone? So I, I think at this point, if I'm hearing that everyone's comfortable now with this option and moving forward with it. So uh, uh, thank you everyone. So with that we will move on to our consent agenda before we move do yeah we need to address any aspects of the uh, key access no uh, we're going to pick pick that up in june after we get our next cost estimate because uh that that we can wait on and i think we'll, we'll be in a better position after the 90 percent drawings and those cost estimates to see where we're at and talk about what strategies we may need to employ at that yeah. point in time. And this is perfect. This enables our professional team to move forward with all the approvals for this. Exactly. It's perfect. So on the consent agenda, I know there's one modification on item 11.3, uh, the rate for uh, the uh, non-certified workers is $15 an hour, not 9.50 an hour. So do we need a, a motion to change it or is it just no, we just, approve it with that modification? Note, just please note that amended rate and uh, Patricia will note it in the minutes accordingly. Okay. So with that, are there any questions on tonight's consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, 
Uh, is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So I know Dr. Harrison, you have uh, some things you'd like to I address, do. so go ahead. Tonight's quite an important night for us. And I am gonna ask Mr. Stromwasser to please promote uh, Gail Duffy. And Gail will be joining us with full rights here, Gail. I think you should be able to turn your video on. Good evening, Gail. So I wanna introduce Gail, Dr. Gail Duffy to the Irvington School Community as our next Assistant Superintendent for Instruction and Human Resources. And before I give Gail that opportunity to speak, I wanna say that uh, we went through an incredibly competitive process, a process by which we were so proud to be able to present uh, a talented, experienced slate of candidates to our uh, interview committee, folks that were all sitting assistant superintendents in top school districts across the region or directors of curriculum and instruction. Um, they went through a comprehensive interview process, um, a multifaceted clinical interview process, um, it, another interview with our administrative team, uh, an interview with me um, alone, and then um, obvious reference checks. And during this uh, entire process, um, we were thrilled to be able to get to meet and know uh, Gail Duffy. Um, Gail is an incredible, uh, passionate individual. Uh, I have to note that she made incredible connections with individuals throughout the process. Um, through her knowledge of teaching and learning, her knowledge of curriculum, the manner in which she communicates really draws people in. And she made those critical personal connections. And with the, out that ability to communicate effectively and build those partnerships, um, you could have all the knowledge in the world, all the experience in the world, and you're not going to move our work forward because you're not going to be able to collaborate. You're not going to be able to engage all those key stakeholders. So Gail was able to make those connections. She was able to really to enthuse everyone that met her along the way about the prospect of the partnership that would come um, down the road. And aside from all that, um, Gail has all those formal experiences. Gail was a special education teacher. She then became a supervisor of special education an elementary school principal in Cornwall, an assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction in Cornwall. She then moved to uh, Terrytown where she was a director of curriculum and instruction before moving into the role of assistant superintendent. Uh, so uh, certainly Terrytown's loss is our gain. And I, I say my apologies to our neighbors uh, but I congratulate the Irvington School District in, in welcoming um, Gail um, to our school community. Gail will be joining us full time on July 1st, and we look forward to an incredible partnership uh, moving forward. But I can tell you, um, Gail has already shown tremendous initiative in um, learning about the Irvington Schools, beginning to develop an entry plan. Um, and then beginning to seek to identify opportunities to build her relationships and spend time in district to learn about uh, that work um, that is before her. So I am really proud uh, to introduce our new partner uh, to the Board of Education and the school community. Uh, Gail, um, you're live and I welcome you to say a few words to, to the school community. Thank you so much, Dr. Harrison and the Board of Education. Uh, this has really been a wonderful experience for me from the beginning to now coming here tonight to really meet the school community and introduce myself to everyone. It's an absolute honor to be joining the Irvington family. I look so forward to continuing the fine work, all of the initiatives that I've learned about throughout the process, talking with your teachers and administrators, talking with the Board of Education. You really have a focus on students and on community and on connection. And those three things really resonate with who I am as a person and also as an educational leader. I could not be more thrilled to be joining everyone July 1st. And again, I'm so excited for this opportunity. So thank you all very much. I look forward to, forward to getting to know the community over the next couple months and having a long lasting partnership with it. So thank you so much. 
Thank you, Dr. Duffy. Uh, again, Thank you. Congratulations, congr Gail. Congratulations, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you in, in the district and uh, working with you uh, going into next year. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much, Gail, and I look forward to the next time I see you actually being physically present here in the school district. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great evening. Okay, you too. Thank you. Dr. Harrison. Yes, yeah, so this evening, um, we also um, of note approved uh, another uh, contract um, with Ms. Stein, our outstanding assistant superintendent uh, for business and, and operations. So kudos to Carol and her leadership and partnership. As we talked this evening uh, about the capital project, as we talked about the budget, that is Carol Stein's through and through. Um, Carol, your leadership is, is fantastic and impressive and your um, partnership and friendship is something um, that I value deeply. So thank you for everything that you do. Uh, Mary, I can't dance around um, acknowledge, acknowledging you this evening. Um, while we're thrilled to welcome Gail, um, we're gonna be sad to see you go. I am um, glad to know um, that you're not running away too quickly that you've committed to partnering with us uh, through the summer to provide uh, continuity for the district in its work with Castle and SEL and the important work that we're doing with our root cause analysis. Um, and your leadership is gonna continue to be valued um, through the summer. And I know that over the past year and a half, we've developed an incredible relationship and partnership and one that I know that's gonna continue to serve me and the Irvington district well. So. Um, we look forward to talking more about you and embarrassing you later on at the end of the year, um, but I couldn't let the night go without saying a few words about you tonight. Thank you. And um, then finally, um, we are you appointed this evening uh, an awesome teacher. Um, Alex Langers has served the um, Irvington School community for the past two years in a leave replacement capacity. Uh, and um, this year, um, a probationary or tenure track position surfaced um, in the position that he, in which he had been serving. Um, Alex went through um, that uh, very challenging, thorough uh, interview process that um, Irvington is known for. And while Alex impressed us uh, along the way, each of the last two years, um, he blew us away in this interview process and demonstrated that he is an incredible teacher and reminded us of all those assets that he brings to the Irvington school community. Um, not only is he a, a great teacher, um, he's a really passionate individual, one who has uh, made great connections within the school community. I know Alex is in the audience tonight. And, you know, I think of my conversations with Alex um, at Muddy Homecoming events and other events where he's come out to support our students and our student athletes in the broader school community. Um, I'm confident that um, Alex is going to be a tremendous asset to our school district um, for many years to come. And uh, Alex, uh, congratulations. And we look forward to a really long and successful career here in Irvington. And I know that you're gonna do great things for our students in the school community. So thank you and uh, congratulations. Um, aside from that, um, I do want to just acknowledge that we do have a number of um, donations, Mr. Friedman, um, to scholarship funds, and certainly it's important to thank all of those individuals who continue um, to support our students and honor uh, our former colleagues here in the Irvington School District or order, or honor former Irvington students, so thank you for that continued support, and I also uh, want to thank uh, the Lyons family for the donation of some lacrosse equipment that will certainly be well used in our athletics program. Yes, certainly. Thank you to everyone for all of those donations. And, and I have one more thing. Oh, I can't sorry. go without notice. Um, tonight, um, while I may have stated this in a letter uh, previously um, to our school community tonight, the Board of Education officially uh, accepts the resignation of Matthew Samuelson, who has served the past five years as the assistant uh, principal at Irvington High School. Um, we know that uh, Matt moving on to another district and one um, where he'll be a principal. Um, he's gonna have incredible impacts on the lives of students. Matt is a proven leader in a high quality individual who's gonna do great things in his new school district. And not only am I thrilled for him to have this opportunity, I'm pleased 
for his family to know that he's going to be much closer to home and knowing the demands of time that are placed on school administrators um, that is going to be a, a nice thing for for all of them um, so again like with mary uh, we'll acknowledge matt before the end of the school year um, but um, we do need to acknowledge matt's uh, five years of of service to the school district and, and to thank him for his impassioned, caring leadership during that time. Uh, certainly. So uh, next we have, uh, again, our second period for community comment or questions. So if there's anyone out there who wishes to uh, make a comment or ask a question, again, now's the time to do so. So while we wait to see if there's anything, I'll announce that our next public meeting is Tuesday, May 25th at 7.30, uh, both here and via Zoom. Uh, also, as Dr. Harrison mentioned, uh, we'll have a meeting next Tuesday to certify the election results. So seeing no questions or comments, is there a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Good night.